Writing the book could quite easily be one of the hardest things that you've ever done. And why is that? There's a lot of emotion involved in it. You know you want to produce a book. You know you've got a story to tell. A story that could really transform other people's lives. But getting started and finishing up, that's a different story. And so that's why I have got Diana with me today, who is part of our book coaching program, who's going to speak to you a little bit about purpose, her book, and the transformation that she's gone through in becoming an author. Diana, welcome to the Right, Learn and Earn show. Thank you so much for being here. Kim, thank you for having me. It's a great pleasure. I'm going to cut straight to the chase. You had a burning desire inside you to share your story. Tell us who is your target audience and why you're wanting to write this book. Kim, I wanted to write this book because when I went through a lot of trauma and abuse, I didn't realize that there would be information out there or people out there that can help me. I was by myself and I had to handle everything by myself. Now I know I can be that person that can guide people and and show them what I have done, that all the stuff I've been through, if you resonate with it, there are ways to come out of it. I've done it. You can do it too. So it's just... I want to share with the world that I'm here to help you and we get past everything you've been through. Now, your book is a little bit about overcoming the challenges of being in a narcissistic relationship. And narcissism is a big buzzword in the world at the moment. But tell us, what is a narcissist? Narcissist, uh, there's a long list. I'm just going to touch on a couple of them. They think they're better than everybody else. They only hang out with people with the same or similar qualifications than them. If you don't have the same qualification, they run you down constantly. They get angry for the smallest little thing. A fly would go by and it would be the end of the world to them. So, and for me, it was just like all the abuse and everything that came with the anger. Um, narcissists play games with you. They play with your mind the whole time. Just when you think that's it, they do something good for you again and you go up that roller coaster. And as soon as you're at the top, they drop you down to the bottom again. So look out for the games that they're playing with you. Are you constantly, I mean, we can't always be constantly happy, but have a fairly good balance of it, but not extremes. And my life was one of extremes. It was either very happy or very, very low. So um, look at whether the um, emotional levels are... A narcissist will also not allow you to show your emo- emotions. Emotions do not exist. And they only care about themselves. They put themselves, they, you can pull them through a ring most of the time, but they, they look after themselves perfectly. And yeah, that's one of the, the things as well. So it's quite interesting because I know people are probably looking at their relationships and saying, oh, I had an argument with that person, they must be a narcissist, but that's not really true. Not all bad behavior means that you are labeled in that way. Absolutely not. No, we've all got our days when we are having good days and we have bad days. It's only actually how you deal with it. And sometimes we snap at people unnecessary, but as soon as they start playing the games, Mm. that is where it comes in. Now, we're going to chat a little bit about book coaching because you haven't finished your book, although you have a very beautiful manuscript that you have finally produced. But in our journey together, there were a couple of things that I noticed. People coming out of traumas who have got a story to share, they've got a lot of self-limiting beliefs that have come from the games that people are playing with them. Now, how did that affect you in your decision to start writing? Okay, if my husband passed away. It was not the narcissist. Uh, I was in a loving relationship. He passed away. And it was only at that point in time when I decided I don't want to carry on living the life that I've been living for such a long time. I want to help more people. So that's when I started 
writing a little ebook. I shared it with a couple of people and they're like, oh, this wasn't edited and you can see. But I wanted to start getting the word out there. I'm here to help you. And that is how my journey started because I didn't know anything about writing. I mean, I didn't even write essays in school. We didn't have Google, so I couldn't Google it. So, but I, I was not a keen writer at school. And uh, yeah, then I just picked up the pen and I started writing. Get the emotions out of my chest. There was something you said to me quite early in our book coaching career. There was someone that you knew that said to you, who would even want to hear your story? Yes. This is something that I've heard on a couple of occasions. It always makes me feel very sad because we're born for a purpose. And a lot of the traumas that we have, they're lessons inside there. How did that particular comment affect you? I put my book aside. For a long time, I, I was just lying in the drawer, well, in the drawer. Um, I, I just didn't want to write any longer because who wants to know my story? Um, but if we listen to people like that, we're never going to do anything in life. Um, when we were little, our parents taught us how to, to walk. If we didn't listen to them on what we can do and we can't do, we would never be able to do to to walk. And the same with this. If I kept on listening to her saying to me, nobody wants to read your book, nobody wants to hear your story, nobody's interested in what you're doing, um, it would have just pushed me further and further back. And a great part of that was the healing that the writing of the book actually brought me. I've worked on healing for many years. But I, th I can almost say by writing it, it closed that chapter. And it also opens up a different chapter for other people. Correct. Because what I find that when you're facing trauma, you tend to withdraw. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> you think it's only me. If anyone finds out how really bad things are, they're going to condemn me. They're going to see me as a failure. And because we get trapped by that shame, we are not able to reach out. We're not able to find help. And it's authors like you that are willing to share some of those challenges in a really real way, authentic way that allows people to say, I'm not alone. There's someone who's overcome what I am journeying through now. I, for so many years, believed that nobody would want to help me. When I called for help from strangers, it, it wasn't available. And I was all by myself. I, But I wasn't as by myself because I know I have loving friends and family, but I didn't want to show them that part of my life. Mm. So I withdrew that mm. and I became two people. Yes. The happy person outside with the wonderful life, mm. the miserable person at home that didn't know how to deal with anything that was going on and just live in fear. Yes. But what I didn't realize at that time was there were so many people out there that would have said to me, don't worry, Diana, we will help you. We stand by you. We'll, we'll hold your hands through this. Mm -hmm. And I never, never gave anybody the opportunity to do it. Yes. And that's why I want to be there to be that person. If you don't trust any of the, well, I've, trust is the wrong word, but if you don't have the, the um, comfort to go to any of your people, I want to be the people that, that, that the person that's there yes. to say, here I am, let me help you. Yes, yes. It makes a huge difference. I know there's another author that um, has been part of my program. And he had a moment where things were going so badly in business that he walked up to the balcony, he looked at the bottom and he thinks, I could just, just do this. And a friend of his said to him, come back, you know, I think we need to go inside. Now I took that book and I gave it to another friend of mine who had basically been done in, in terms of business. And he was in, in the crossroad that he's lost his home, he's lost his business party, he's lost everything all of his income and he read that book and he said I'm not alone there's someone else over there that has overcome this particular problem I can make it and so I always celebrate authors that come into the book coaching program who are willing to be vulnerable and share their stories I have to ask you 
Just share with the audience a little bit what book coaching has meant to you, what your expectations were, what it was about, and what it meant to you coming through the journey. To be honest with you, when I started with the book coaching, I didn't have expectations. I just wanted to write my book. Okay. So then it was like I sat down with you and it's like, okay, this is how we're going to do it. And I'm like, is that what book writing is all about? But the guidance and the information that you've shared with me had made such a difference to it. You've taught me how to to write in a completely different way than what I speak. Because what I wrote down, the way I would say words is just the way I would write them down. You gave a dull word color and meaning. You taught me as well how to use different words because we know there are so many words, over 500,000 words in the English language, but we don't use as many words. So you've also shown me how to incorporate different words in my, in my book, words that I've, I would, under normal circumstances, never have used. And just to know that there is somebody there, and I'm going to be honest with you, the word count, that was not always the easiest for me because it felt like, I've got this teacher or this person here behind my shoulder that is controlling me the whole time. Oh, wait, that brought back memories from when I was in corporate. And once I got that thought out, because it was just like, no, Kim's actually just pushing me in a nice way to, so if I don't do the word count, I'm not going to move forward. I'm not, I'm never ever going to finish this book because if you only write two, two words a day, it's not going to get there. So thank you for pushing me. <laughs> so I just want to tell you something else about narcissists as well. Sorry, I was just thinking about that now. Narcissists are not just at home. Mm -hmm. They are in the workplace as well. Mm -hmm. And what I've realized is people bring their stuff from home and they take it out on the people at work. Correct. And I was bullied in so many positions I earned, uh, had with that as well. Sorry for jumping in on that. Now, that's actually quite true because what I find in the book coaching program is that there are voices that we have all around us. It could be friends, it could be family, it could be work colleagues. And they are speaking their reality, they're projecting onto us. And when that happens, you need to have a safe space where you can say, this is me, this is my purpose, and I'm not apologizing to anyone because I'm living my purpose. And I think that that's, that's really what I love seeing in people. So on a personal level, I've had someone when I started writing and I was quite passionate about it and I was spending time getting into it, she said this to me, Kim, does passion even pay the rent? And those words almost crushed me because I'm like, I'm not earning any money from my book at the moment. I'm just writing it. And I almost, like you did with your, with your friend, I almost dropped my book because of that. And I got involved in a community and they said to me, as long as you were spending certain number of hours a day paying the bills, putting food on, on the table for your family, no one should care about what you do in your personal time. It's your dream. And that's the space that I give to people to have a little cocoon where they can celebrate their dream and their purpose. Now, there's something that I want you to share with people because you were struggling through the, the word count, as you mentioned. And just for the audience, I have a workbook that I make all of my authors fill in. And that tells you what your life looks like, how you can find pockets of time, what worked, what didn't work. And for a while, you were struggling through the word count. And one day, the word count dramatically increased. What was that tipping point? What made a change for you? Have a goal date. By when do you want to finish your book? Because just writing the book doesn't mean anything. If in, I mean, I could have been writing this book for the next 20 years. But the moment I said to you, I want to have my book done before my birthday, which is in September, that was almost like, oh, 
we've got three months left. I better get my act together. And it was just like, focus, 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 focus. Finish it now. Do what needs to be done. Because what is a goal if you're not doing anything to achieve it? Exactly. And for me, it was achieving this goal. And this is my birthday present to myself. Uh, because as much as I want to help other people, I've also healed from it. And it's my thank you to myself. And people might think like what you've been in an abusive relationship and everything, but I've done so much gratitude for what has happened to me. Because if it didn't, I wouldn't be able to write the book. That's very true. And that's why we always say to people, your pain is actually your positioning. There are people going through things that need to hear from you, need to see how you've overcome situations. Now, you developed a model called the Kappa model, exactly. And then this book is going to be a support to that whole system. Tell us a little bit about the Kappa model. So the Kappa model also, when my husband died, he died of suicide and his last words to me were, please forgive me. And that is where my journey with forgiveness seriously started. And I was looking for a way to make my life work again. I've been through grief counseling, but I never found Yes, they helped me deal with the grief, but they never helped me deal with me. And that's the same with the trauma and, and abuse that I've been through. You can speak to anybody. They can help you to a point, but I need to find a way to help me. And that's how I got up with the Kappa model. I needed to realize how do I deal with all the changes that happen in, around, uh, in and around me all the time. Amnesty. Amnesty is the forgiveness part of it. How do you play after you've been through all this drama in your life? You have to have fun somehow. And then there's appreciation, which is the gratitude. We've got so much to be grateful for. And once I've put all of those together, it was just like the puzzle just came together and everything started working for me. And it gave me the freedom. The play part is freedom. I accept any changes that happen, changes that I make in my life, changes that happen in other people's lives, because we cannot control everything. Change is around us all the time. The forgiveness part, like I say, is a very important part for me. Because if we don't forgive, we hold on to, uh, to anger and grudgments towards other people. And who do we benefit by that? We're doing damage to ourselves because we're the person with the, uh, that carries the anger. If you forgive people, it just gives you a freedom of life again. You don't even have to tell the other person, I forgive you, but do it within your heart. Mm -hmm. And then you can move forward with that. I didn't know how to play any longer because for so many years, I've always been surrounded by other people. So I didn't even know what play meant to me because I was always doing what other people did. And then when I found myself completely alone, I thought, what does fun mean to me? Where do I go? What do I do? Do I want to do this? Do I want to do that? And you start finding things that you actually enjoy and you don't have to worry about, okay, um, I don't, I can't do this now. Um, you, you take control of your life. So if somebody says to me, I want to go fishing, now I can say, I'm not interested. Thank you very much. Because I have gone through this program so many times already, uh, the model just works on all levels because you don't have that guilt any longer. You don't feel bad about saying no. You actually say thank you for the invite, but forgive me for not going. I love that. Diana, if people wanted to connect with you in terms of your Kappa model and eventually when we publish this wonderful book, how would they go about doing that? I've got a website. It is dianarodriguez.coza. So it's D-I-A-N-A-R-O-D-R-I-G-U-E-S 
www.co.za and my contact information is on there and I'd love to connect. Super. Thank you so much for being on the show. Um, visitors, if you look down below, you're going to find all of the links uh, to get hold of Diana. And I'm encouraging you that if you've got a book inside you, don't wait. Connect with us. Let us know if you want to be part of the book coaching program. And we are happy to have a free 30-minute discovery call with you to find out more about your book that you're wanting to bring to the world. Have a fantastic day and I am looking forward to seeing you on the next show when we launch your book. Thank you, Kim. Thank you for having me.